this is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com and today it's going to be more of a paranormal interview with Cisco Murdoch who is the author of a book about her various paranormal experiences called We Are the Children in the Wilderness of the Afterlife, a guided tour through a haunted life. It is on Amazon. I will put the link in the description of this video. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic, man. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me on. Thanks a lot for uh, High Strangeness for introducing me to you. They'd seen some of my other paranormal interviews and they told me they thought you would be someone good for me to talk to. Um, you've had direct experiences with spirits and from what I understand, the house that you're living in now, which I'm guessing is in the background here, is actually haunted as well, is it not? It's, well, let's put it this way. Um, it is off and on, and I can kind of explain that. Um, we have a tendency to think that, now, if I could, may I say something first? Of course. I've been in this for like 45 plus years. I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When, you know, somebody comes on and says, I'm an expert at this. I'm an expert at that. I mean, that to each his own. I'm saying I've been searching this stuff out where it's found me for 47 some odd years. And you keep looking and trying to understand everything that's happening. And it just seems like you have more questions. You know, you think you know it or you have a solid theory on what you think is going on. And then something switches up on you. So let that be said. You know, I don't want anybody to think I'm up here saying I know all of this. And this is, you know, I know some things in my heart that I'm comfortable saying I know. But uh, it really is all just theory, if you know what I mean. And, you know, even if it's trying to take an educated uh, stand on things, trying to to discern all the different, different things that go on. Um, now, what happens to me is sometimes things follow me home. Um, and I wouldn't say that this house is haunted per se, but it does have comings and goings of ghosts and spirits and things like that sometimes, yes. Does that so make sense? You've, you've <laughs> had lots of experiences. Yeah, it makes a little bit of sense, but maybe as we go on, we'll understand it a little bit more, what you're saying there. Um, what's been the best experience you've had with the spirit, like the most, uh, like, have you seen an actual apparition or has it all been, uh, sounds and stuff? Oh yeah, I've seen them. Um, when I was a little kid, I could see them. I lived in a haunted farmhouse then the farmhouse, when I moved into it, um, I think I was three or two or I was three when my family, I was the youngest large family all moved into this uh, haunted uh, house in um, it was it was in uh, Jackson, New Jersey, and it was very um, a lot of Revolutionary War uh, skirmishes and, and battles happened very close to there. So anytime you're near something like that, you're going to get that kind of energy going on. Um, I truly believe there was more than one thing there, but what I saw there was a Revolutionary War um, ghost of a soldier. Uh, appeared multiple times to many family members um, in different ways. And uh, I didn't find out till years later because we weren't allowed to really speak about it then. We have, everybody just kept it to themselves or each other. They weren't telling me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that was sort of the first experience I think that got me started. And then as I was a child, I'd see more things in different places. And that's what got me started into trying to figure out what was going on because in my generation back then you just didn't talk about it like you did now like you do now you know now it would be almost commonplace in the lunchroom at work or in the office or someone go wow i had an orb go through my living room last night you know it wouldn't be as odd then or now as it was then if you know what i mean but that's what got me started yes i have seen uh multiple apparitions i don't always see them as full apparitions um it depends on the ghost and the spirit. And just for clarification, I call ghosts the essence of a human being that has not crossed over. However you want to think 
crossed over means afterlife or other side of the veil that are kind of stuck here, either by free will, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense or confusion or anger or whatever it may be, or just trying to figure out what's going on with, with that individual. Um, and I call spirits, the ones that have crossed over and come back and visit, visit, you know, either loved ones or a property or something like that, but they come and go. They're not stuck here. So I do see them. Did any ever try and communicate with you, either ghost or spirit? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's my kind of, that's my, my, my (laughs) shtick. That's what happens. People say, are you a ghost hunter? And I'm like, no, they find me. (laughs) I don't have to go looking for them. That's kind of the thing. Um, As time has developed, I don't really give myself a label. If I had to, I'd say sensitive empath. I certainly don't. Um, call myself a medium or anything like that because I have friends who truly are fantastic mediums and psychics and any kind of combination of those things and I certainly don't have the gifts they have I just kind of find myself in situations and bam like they find me I seem to be one who can communicate a little more um, especially in battlefields I was a soldier myself I was in the army And um, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, Um, whether I could go in and kind of calm the situation down a little. Um, That's basically what I do. And if I ever did anything in this, that's where I put my time and my energy into trying to help. Um, Have you ever heard of Hans Holzler? No. Okay. He is... uh, what people sometimes refer to as the original ghost hunter. He's not, I mean, there were people before that, but um, he said he was a, a, a ghost hunter and he had a fantastic way about him. He would go into the homes, not to so much help the homeowner or the business owner, but to help the spirit, to help the ghost that was there because he figured if I help to figure out why the ghost is here, that'll help everybody. And he once said, I've never been afraid of a ghost they're really just people in need of help and that's how i look at it does that make sense yeah so i guess you haven't encountered any of the alleged uh bad ones i guess that uh are more are more troublesome (laughs) yes i have uh an interesting thought i mean um you're a man that's hung out with a lot of um fantastic uh different characters okay let's just say um and whether you're you're hanging out with you know your buddies or you wrestle or you know these fantastic strong women that are out doing the same thing and everybody's got a persona a character they put forward right yeah. and you know yourself okay this guy is just he's he's doing this as a character you know he's really a teddy bear he's a sweetheart inside give you the shirt off his back you know you know what i'm talking about well People are all the same. Now you imagine, and don't say any names because I'm not digging here, but imagine that that one char- person that you know is really not putting on a character. They're really like that. You know, they're really, you know, could uh, be that mean or that uh, uh, methodical, let's say. And they pass. Well, there's no magic wand that changes your persona or your aggression, or your anger, or your confusion, or anything like that, because you've just passed, if you have not crossed over. Now, what happens over there seems to be different. But if you stay here, and you don't lose that earthly stuff, you see what I mean? Now, imagine somebody like that coming at you, and they're mad, and they can do certain things, or found out that they can, you know, move things, or toss things. And and sometimes people think that human spirits human ghosts um are the evil darker entities because they're acting like that and they're really just a human being that's confused or angry or mad or doesn't really see what what they're going through they don't understand um and that sometimes they really are uh, evil entities there are absolutely evil entities and i don't believe that was, they were ever human beings you know there's ancient uh things there's um, stuff that we can't even begin to uh, put labels on. But yes, they do exist. And um, 
I told you earlier that a lot of times I go to, I've been many times to Gettysburg Battlefield and a couple other battlefields. And I'm just, I guess in my heart of heart, I'm still trying to help that revolutionary soldier that I saw as a kid. And I didn't have a chance to help, if you know what I mean. And also being a soldier myself, you know, an ex-soldier, leave no man behind. <laughs> so if we really do lean on kind of what Hans Holzler said, they're just people in need of help wouldn't you try to go and try to help these human beings? Like you think Gettysburg 150, what, four years now, these guys have been stuck and in the same pain and not understanding what's going on. Um, if I can do one small thing to try to help them or get one to listen, you bet I'm going to try to do it. You know, So how do you, what type of conversations are you having with these uh, entities? Well, each time it's been different. Uh, um, I've never gone completely by myself. Um, I've gone, uh, it, the way it works with me is like I said, I have very little ability. Um, I don't really, like say I don't go, people don't hire me and charge. I, I would never charge to do this. To me, it's just a gift. It was given to me, I give back, plain and simple. There's nothing in it, you know, even the book. I mean, it's so low price. It's not even funny. <laughs> you know, it's just to help people. That's all it is. And, um, you go in and you have different communication. Like you can use dousing rods. You can, um, I try to use what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling. And in some cases I will use dousing rods to kind of confirm what I'm already getting. If that makes sense. Have you ever heard of dousing rods or just like, um, copper rods, that often were used to find water and things like this in the past um, and say, give me a yes, give me a no. And if I'm getting that yes in all my filters and I'm hearing it in my head and then they cross the rods and uncross them, I know I've got a confirmation three ways for me. I basically go on feeling and that's very unpopular in a lot of the ghost shows and things that are on now, the paranormal shows. Um, I think it's coming back. But about 10 years ago, when some of these shows started first coming out, like Ghost Hunters and things, I took all the feeling out of it. And I'm like, gosh, how can you do that? You know, just go playing on science. I think now we're trying to put a lot of those things together because uh, feeling um, and sensing things to cut that off, it just seems um, if there's some, a combination of those things, tech and feeling and, and, and your senses, all of that, I think that's the way to go. That's just my opinion you know but uh yes i could have a conversation in that way um one of the gentlemen i helped it took so long first to get him to trust me basically i was just saying read my intent because if they have that ability that's one thing that we have in our favor they do have the ability to read your energy even if they are very scrambled and they kind of connect to that energy um say if I, if you're very that's why they say if you're very depressed or if you're angry or things like that you shouldn't go in certain places because they're going to those type of spirits will connect to that if that makes sense but if you go in there very calm and i just basically said if there's anybody here who's willing to listen to me is there anybody here that um i can help read my intent and know that i'm telling you the truth okay and it basically starts that way um I had one man, I was trying to get him to calm from everything. I mean, just imagine, first of all, the state of mind that an individual, you know, in the center of a battle, um, God only knows what he has seen, the horrors, right? And now he's been stuck in this, not really a loop, not really repeating everything, because this was an intelligent uh, human being. And I'm trying to get him to say, to understand that he was a soldier and he did the things that he needed to do to survive for his brother standing next to him to survive. He did his duty and he was afraid to cross over because of everything he had heard. The fear, um, I don't want to be judged. I don't want this. I don't, you know, I don't, I've seen hell. I don't want to see it again. Uh, we went, had that kind of a conversation. And honestly, I think in all I do, you know, I, I have a podcast myself too, and everybody that I've interviewed and just trying to collect information over the years, 
that seems to be in the high 70, 75 percent tile, maybe higher of they didn't want to cross because they didn't. They feared it. You know, what's on the other side, the judgment or maybe a faith based religion or something along those lines that they just felt they were going to be judged. And um, it was very hard to talk uh, that one through it. And I try to connect them. Um, if you imagine how long it had been a soldier like that before he'd felt love, like family love, uh, a hug from a, you know, a family member, or, you know, even a, a dog, loyalty of a dog and that kind of friendship. And I was trying to connect him into that energy. And man, he about broke me because he was saying, who could love me? I was an orphan. I joined, you know, at, at like 18. Um just to be a part of something, you know, um, and we're talking the civil war here and he, uh, it, it took a little while to connect him back into that. And I actually had to connect him to the thought of, okay, did you fight with somebody you felt like was a brother to you? Like a, you know, like a camaraderie, a brotherhood. And he said, yes. And I said, well, that's love. I said, let's try to connect into that. You know, and he started to calm down. So it's almost like um, it's almost like therapy or talking to a friend who's really upset and comes over on, you know, to, <laughs> on a Friday night or something, sits down. It's just all a mess. You know, you have to try to unravel it. Um, but that's what it's like for me. But I'll tell you, I there was one guy I had to go back. I guess it was about five times and. He he was a uh, he was not a soldier. He was just a young guy. Um, I think he used to hang out at this bar all the time. I was also a bartender, so I've been a lot of haunted. There's a lot of hauntings going on at bars, trust me. <laughs> and uh, he was a young man. He was about 23, and he just loved playing pool and hanging out at the bar with his buds and everything. And, and he had died about 1953, 54, somewhere along those lines. He went out and he was drunk and got by a car and died. And he chose to come back to this bar. And he was one of those funny ghosts that we like go down the bar and like slap a, you know, he'd slap a woman on a butt or something like that, or pinch one and watch him, watch her smack the guy next to him. He loved to do stuff like that and um, try to be around that kind of energy, you know, the drinking and the fun and the music and everything. And I had to talk to him, like I said, friends, friends of mine and, and I went back at least five times and tried to talk to him, get him calmed down. And my main thing with him was please just understand it's your free will. If you want to stay, absolutely. It's your free will stay, but you have to understand time is different. You know, this might be the bar you, you can see and that, you know, you're having fun now, but what if, you know, 50 years from now it's a parking lot and you've created this cage for yourself. You see what I mean? Almost like a, an invisible, a box that he's in and that's what his situation was and i said just so you know all you have to do is think it see the light walk into it connect into that energy and i felt sad walking away because um you know but that's it it's their free will just like you have free will and i have free will i think we have that after death too so when you say cross to the other side do they know how to do that? Like, what are the what are their options? Like, well, well, this is it. I think it's as individual as you and I are. You know, just everybody is as individual. So, what might work for one may not work for another. Um, I do think, in some cases, I certainly like, get. I don't have all the answers, but what I've seen to get time after time that. Um, they can connect with their loved ones or friends. Um, if they don't want to connect with, you know, that wife that made them crazy or, you know, that mother that they don't want to face right away or somewhere along the line, you know, they don't have to. That's not, that's not it. But it, it seems like you just have to reach out and ask for help or you have to just connect into that energy. But if you're very erratic and you're very, you don't know what's happened. I mean, gosh, how many different ways are there to go out? You know, in a quick accident um, or an overdose. You know, if you're thinking you're overdosing, 
you're already in a mindset, are you not, to be doing that in the first place? You know, um, any kind of an addiction, you know, you're angry at yourself or you feel like you've let down friends or loved ones or whatever it may be. You're you're already in a lower vibrational state. OK, uh, say you're depressed um, or you're just you're frantic about something and you go out right then. Well, what changed that? Are you still in that state? You know, if you're here. If you cross over, I think you're still in that state. And I think there's a healing somehow. What that is, I don't know. But I promise you, as I sit here, and I have no reason to lie, I have seen ghosts that were stuck. And I saw how they were then. And then I've seen them after they crossed over and came back in a visitation state. And a lot of that was all gone like a healing you know like maybe they had a limp and now they didn't have it anymore i see it with animals too so that what like i said in the beginning this is all theory and it's trying not to speculate trying to be honest with yourself and other people that you're trying to guide or help with your questions but i've seen it i've seen it time after time after time so what happens over there i don't know which is why the title of the book, we are all children in the wilderness of the afterlife. What does that mean? Are we kids? No, that's not what it means. What it means is we're innocent. We don't know. We're learning. See what I mean? We don't know. It's like the last frontier, right? We can say we think we know, you know, some people, it might be a, a walk on the beach, a cabin in the woods, you know, fishing at a lake. I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a mystery, but it does seem that we go through some kind of a healing thing. Uh, do I think we're judged? I think we judge ourselves. I honestly think we look back over this lifetime and say, man, I could have done better there. Or what did I do that for? Uh, I, don't, I didn't know it was going to have that reaction to so many people, like ripples. That's what I think. But like I said, think, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I hope I, I, I don't know if you're just there forever. If you cross mm. over, you're just there forever. I don't know. Or I don't I think any just energy do. floating around. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, we're all energy, right? And energy can't be destroyed. It's just changed. So where does that energy go? I once heard, and I wish I could remember where I heard it that um, a, a person that passes is, tw I can't remember how it was, it was like 21, uh, 21 ounces lighter. So what does that mean? Like is the soul 21 ounces, what does that mean for everybody? I mean, it's crazy. We hear all these little things, but I've heard crazier things that are true that we've seen, right? So. You know, basically, I'm like this. If you're on the fence, that's great. And I, I, you know, skeptics and everything else, it doesn't matter. That's awesome. Everybody's supposed to do their own journey. Nobody can tell anybody else how to think or what's, or I know, no, no, this is true, right? But if you're on the fence and we can throw our legs over and jump on this side for just a little while and think, why not? You know, why not? If there's, if there's some kind of higher energy or if, if, if it might be us. It might be our higher selves, our light connected to the energy. Who knows? We like to put labels. All I can tell you, man, is I've seen, like I said, I saw my own mother in her sick state, you know, just like she died, full of pain, worry, hunched. You know, I, I could feel her before she showed up just for the pain that would come with it. I could feel her before she got there. And then years later, I don't know when she crossed, but she did. And years later, she appeared to me, full apparition, dressed, standing up straight. Her hair was done. She had a big smile on her face. No more pain came with her. It just love. And just, it, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And I've seen it with other spirits that were not that close to me in my lifetime. 
So is it all an illusion? You know, and if other people see it with you, is it mass, you know, illusion or um, hysteria or, you know what I mean? It's like it's, something's going on, you know, something's going on. When your mother came back to you in the more healthy state, was she looking like her younger self or was she still looking like her older self? She was younger. She was at least 10, 15 years younger. And I've often heard that um, they tend to come back when, you'll, when you can recognize them uh, the best. If they can choose how to manifest that sometimes like like say you had your, your older grandfather he's going to come back a more spry you know 50 year old rather than the 75 or 85 year old that went out i hear that very often i really do now i am going to be staying in a haunted house for three days uh in january so next month and if i want to have like i know chances of, of an experience happening are slim but is there anything I can do to make it more likely to have an experience happen? I think so. First, you got to kind of ask yourself, you got to go uh, kind of the, the, let's say the metaphysical ways that you could do it is, of course, carrying um, certain crystals with you. Say if you want a protection, you want to connect more to spirit, an amethyst. Okay. Even if it's an amethyst ring or something you want to put in your pocket. Um, dried lavender in your pockets. Why does that work? I don't know. But, you know, multiple cultures have used it for similar things over thousands of years. So who am I to disperse, you know, to say it isn't true? Um, what I'd say to you is probably prepare yourself. It's your energy that draws. Okay. Have you ever heard the story of... Um, Say somebody doing a seance or a Ouija board. And I don't recommend them if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's like, you know. Right. Sister. I had one unusual experience <laughs> with a Ouija board, which was my yeah. only ever supernatural experience. Um, it actually, uh, I was joking around with it and it kept going to no. And I was being rude because I thought I was my friend playing around with it. But it finally went to no for the fifth time and all the power went off in the house. And it was at that point that I actually believed in the supernatural. Cause before that I didn't believe, but it was way too much of a coincidence and him and I were yeah. the only ones in the house. Well, see, that's it too. I mean, isn't that the way a lot of these things go? Is it like, you know, was it a coincidence or not? You know, um, a lot of times I think too, it's like my podcast, I started it to try to put some light back in the world. Do I deal with, you know, dark stuff too? Of course, cause you can't take, it's like yin and yang, you know, you can't take it all with, but I try to never leave anybody without some thoughts on how to change that situation or try to keep away from that, you know, uh, and things like that. I try to put a little bit of light back into it because I really do believe there's a lot of miracles that happen, a lot of little synchronicities, a lot of little helps along the way that we get. And we can't just keep saying it's a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we tend to talk ourselves out of uh, messages from spirit or messages from loved ones. You know, that song, like you're thinking about them or something happens and that song comes on the radio. It's their favorite song. And you go, nah, why not go with it? You know, because we're kind of, why not? What are you hurting? You know, you're erring on the side of whatever. But, um, yeah, you basically prepare yourself because they can read you. A lot of people say, uh, I'm not a big at all of provoking. Um, <laughs> not because, well, the thing is, is the reason is this. One, it's rude. Yeah. Two, it's, um, you don't go into, if somebody came into my house and started talking to me like that, you know what I mean? They'd beat both barrels, you know what I'm saying? And they would. I mean, it's just it's rude. So you're not going to get a great reaction. But if you go in there and you do whatever your personal little meditation is, if you've got a little mantra that you say, or if you have a prayer of protection, or if you have whatever it is that calms your soul, calms your energy that works for you, I would say do that. Open yourself up to it, but also protect your, you know, yourself. And then kind of go in and just sit there and see if there's an energy that communicates with your energy, and I don't mean to sound vague about that, but 
you are going to attract, you know, like they say, you get what you put out. Okay, so you're going to attract. So I would look into who's haunting the house. Okay, a lot of people go by the history. Well, Mabel died upstairs of, you know, scarlet fever in 1923. So it must be her, you know, Harry died in the backyard. The tractor acts must be him. A lot of spirits will follow you to where you're going. You can pick them up when you're getting a Starbucks or picking them up when you got beer last night at the liquor store. You know what I mean? And it's just not communicating to you till you open up in that spot, which is why I said earlier, my house isn't constantly haunted. I've had things here. Because sometimes things follow you home until they can open up to you. And do you see what I mean? Yes. So I would try that. I would absolutely try that and see what connects. Is there anyone here who would like to communicate with me and give them time? You My know, original time. plan was to use the Ouija board the first night because it'll be just me and another one or two people there the first night, but the other two nights there'll be more. So I figured mm. that would be the best night. Try it. Um, now I'm going to tell you the truth because if anybody that knows me listens to this, they're going to say, oh, Cisco, you didn't tell them. When you're using a Ouija board, you have to know who you're using it with too, because you're basically, what you're doing is you're combining their energy with your energy. And then you're opening up a portal and welcoming anybody that's there to come in and use, go through you to move <laughs> that in chat. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So if you do something like that, you really are opening yourself. Um, and like I said, you're com combining their energy with you. So you really got to know who you're in there with. Okay. Um, basically what I would do is take a little recorder. Usually the, the cheapest little things work the best. You know, the little recorders that you can talk to it and then play back and see if you got any answer. Um, because they're going through the uh, machine, not you, for one. Um, you're asking if there's anybody there. Would they like to say anything? Um, that's a little safer. And it's almost an instantaneous type of thing. Um, you're not having to guess, did it come over the white noise? And was it something we picked up from the construction workers down the street? Or was it over here? You know, is it CB? You've got something there. And then you can communicate with them. Um, I recommend dowsing rods. I like the dowsing rods because they're not coming through you to move the dowsing rods. They're moving the rods. Does that Where make do sense? Where get dowsing rods? Dowsing rods, um, any metaphysical store, mostly. Um, you can order them off the net. I recommend getting them somewhere where you can kind of feel which one feels right for you. They're not as hard to find. You can make your own. Get some copper. Go down to Home Depot. Get some copper wire. And go ahead and get you about, oh, I guess about, uh, I'd say, nine gauge copper wire. You can pull it right off the reel and cut it for you. Make two L's out of it and then get you um, like two, about two, three inch tubes like uh stainless steel tubes to put them in so they can rest and move easy so you're holding the metal tubes and the rods are moving freely make your own you know everybody's got a home depot or lowe's oh yeah and just you just bend it and once you know copper is very malleable so once you bend it into your l kind of bang it with a hammer a little bit around that where you made that l bend make your own and take a bit, see what happens. Sit in there and get quiet, get right with yourself, and then hold those things. Put your elbows in and hold them like right in front of you with your fists, like right in front of you, like this. So you're not shaking or anything like that. And ask them to show you a yes, show you a no. And then now you're communicating. Of course, you have to ask yes or no questions, you know, but you can get pretty far with that. You can get pretty far with that. But if you don't know the history of the place and you don't know who came in with the other people, people, a lot of people that have been this a long time say a phrase that kind of makes you think. They say places aren't haunted. People are. Now, what does that mean? Does that just mean that a person is carrying around their, you know, ghosts and spirits following certain people around all the time? Yeah, it means that. It also means that. You could go into a, you could move into a house tomorrow, okay, and live there for ten years and never see or hear a thing. 
And then you could move out and another family move in, but because their energy or um, their, not just their abilities, but because of their, just their pure energy or whatever's going on with them, they're going to be, you know, see apparitions or get manifestations or things moving or stuff like that. Um, why is that? Again, same thing I said in the beginning, energy. You know, they're going to connect with you. One of the best stories I ever heard um, was, uh, are you familiar with the actor Michael Madsen? I know the name. Okay. You've seen the movies, trust me. <laughs> he's the bad guy. Always, he's, a, he's a cool dude. Anyway, he was on a movie shoot. They put him in a hotel. And he had to spend, I don't know how long on this shoot, but I'm going to say, you know, a couple weeks, if not more. And the whole time he's there, he's a really great family man. He's not what he portrays at all. There we go again, actors, right? So he was missing his kids and he's calling his wife and he's having these conversations. You know, I miss you. We got to stay longer. It's taking longer to shoot, yada, yada. And I really miss you guys. I want to be home. Now, while he's there, he gets a full apparition, uh, apparition of a young girl. Uh, obviously from another period in time and he's freaked by it it scares him of course everybody's you know be scared startled by that yes um he goes and he asks the uh, manager downstairs the next day the manager tells him oh well a young girl did die on the stairs playing ball and of course it was you know about 30 40 years ago and he tells him the story and he goes the rest of his life thinking that this is what happened he's seeing this little girl who died on the stairs well, he gets some good help, some somebody who really knows what they're talking about. You know, in this business, it's it's hard, but they're out there. I promise you, there's good, good people out there. And she tells him, no, it wasn't that little girl. That little girl did die, but she crossed. She's her spirits taken care of. She's good to go. The little girl that was connecting with you was a little girl who died with her brother that um, there was a a fire in this hotel and it was a couple of rooms down and they their mom and dad was um addicts and they had best make basically left them alone um to go get high or whatever and when the motel caught on fire they got scared and hid in the closet and died of smoke inhalation the little girl connected with michael Matson's energy because he was a good father and he missed his children and she needed a good parent, energy connecting. And she opened up to him. You see what I'm saying? It could be as simple as that. We tend to misunderstand a lot of times. Of course, it could just be some jerk that wants to, you know, give you a hard time too. You know, I mean, there's like, I, like we said, you know, you're not going to change just because you die. If you're a jerk in life, you know. Interesting. Now, I know you're, uh, you're no UFO expert, but since I cover UFOs on here sometimes, what do you think, like, the, the greatest piece of evidence you've seen on uh, UFOs recently is? I'd have to say Benny and Barney Hill is pretty doggone, you know, staggering. I mean, staggering. Here's this, you know, couple just out riding in the car. You know, and these are two very gentle spirits who did a lot of things for their church and their social um, town, you know, uh, different things that they did, you know, of gave of themselves. And they didn't want the publicity. They just were scared and didn't know what else to do. Um, the dress being evidence, you know, the rips and different things. I, I think that's amazing. Travis Walton, absolutely amazing man when you speak to him. Are you familiar? Uh, fire in the sky oh the yeah movie. i've interviewed him yeah oh he's wonderful with him on this channel for anyone listening isn't he a wonderful human being yes i just love him i just love him and um you know again very reluctant but he just wasn't gonna stand for the bs and i don't blame him you know all of his friends were being you know accused of murdering him basically um you know, I just, and the movie was bunk, but, you know, there was a lot of truth to the movie. The movie, you know, was great, but Hollywood, you know, but yeah. when you listen to his story, he tells you exactly what happened and what they did to him and, you know, everything else. So, um, 
I've interviewed people myself that have had unbelievable uh, experiences. Have you ever had talked to anyone who's had the one where they're in their bed or, or, or whatever, and all of a sudden, you know, the light comes and pulls them through the roof, like from wherever their room is, and they just pull them, and they can see the beams, they can see the insulation, they can see the wires, they can see the roof, they can see, oh my God, can you imagine? I mean, I don't know what to say. Do I believe it? You bet I do. Why? I mean, again, what a terrible waste of space to think we're the only thing, only intelligent life, if you want to call it that, it, that it exists. <laughs> yeah. I, that's kind of arrogant, you know? I really believe uh, there must be, I, I believe in multiple dimensions. Tesla did. Who am I to say, you know? Do I understand it all? No. You know, um, I'll give you one bigger. I believe in reincarnation. And I don't think this is the only place we can reincarnate to. There's something to think about. And I've been told by multiple people who will be wiser than I'll ever be, that if we do choose, and apparently free will, we get to choose, and we choose to come to this planet, that we're almost automatic heroes to our higher spirits or whatever you want to call it, ascended beings, whatever you want to call them, because this is the hardest life path here, because this is such a young planet. We still kill each other, man. We still create war. We still uh, feel jealousy and anger and hatred. So it, it's a hard life to get through. You know, and, and try to be a higher vibrational being, if you want to put it that way. So, do I believe in aliens? You bet. From multiple planets? Yup. You know. What are they here to do? Am I afraid? No, because I think as smart as they wanted to hurt us, they'd have done it a long time ago. Hopefully. Hopefully it's that. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it kind of like we do to dolphins, man? Do you ever think about it that way? Have you ever seen, okay, just a, a, you know, a planet show, whatever you want to say, you know, we're just helping the dolphins along. We're pulling them in, we're tagging them, right? So we can track them. We're keeping a good eye on them. We're checking them out. See, take a little blood and all that other stuff and let them go again. Sound familiar? Yeah. You know? But that doesn't explain the cattle mutilations. No, I got no explanation for that at all. Or the crop circles. You know, yeah. messages? I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know, but it's so intriguing, isn't it? I mean, you've got UFO stuff going all the way back. To, yeah, I mean, Columbus, you've got it written. I'm Native American. You've got pictures of it written on cave walls from, you know, 2,000, you know, 3,000 years ago. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's all intriguing, isn't it? It is. It's very interesting. And if people want to know more about your stories, it's we are... All Children in the Wilderness of the Afterlife, a guided tour through a haunted life. The link will be right in the description here. And you have a podcast. You want to tell us about your podcast? Oh, sure. It's Journey Through the Gate Paranormal Portal Podcast. And it's like one or two a month. And I try to, you know, interview interesting people. Um, like I said, I try to put a little light out there. Um, I've got, you know, a really good one coming out for Christmas about what are our loved ones doing in the afterlife? Do they hear us when we, you know, speak about, you know, uh, speak to them around the holidays and stuff, um, things like that. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, uh, there's some interesting, interesting people on there. And the book is basically, it's not just stories of things that happened to me. When I was a young girl, I told you about the Revolutionary War soldier, right? And I'm looking for answers. I'm looking, somebody explain this to me. You know, this happened, this happened, you know, why, why, why? And it was hard to find true ghost stories where somebody wasn't trying to blow smoke. You know what I mean? Um, and I just wanted to say, this was this experience that happened to me. This is what was going on around me at the time. This is how it happened. This is what it sounded like, what I heard, what, ha you know, what it, was there smells, was there feelings, what happened? Were there animals around? How'd they react? So other people that have had experience can kind of match up and validate their own. 
I have no interest in, you know, adding to it or detracting because if I did that, well, first of all, I believe that the spirit's going to know about it <laughs> because I think they see it all the time. You know, you got it somewhere along the line. I mean, you got to be honest. You know, if you can't be honest with, you know, yourself and other people when you're doing this, there's, you know, it's just um, an illusion. You know, I wanted to put something real out there. And my friend Steve Stockton came along and um, he's a co-author. And what he did was I wrote a chapter and I didn't see what he was writing. We did this blind and he just wrote how that chapter made him feel. Did he have any kind of experience that matched up or what his thoughts were on it? There's stuff in there where a possible visit from angels or help from a spirit guide. I don't know. You know, we like to put labels on things. I try to let the reader do that. What do you think it was? You know, that kind of thing. So that's what the book is. And it's available in Kindle also. If you buy the paperback, um, they'll let you gift the Kindle for like $1.99 to somebody for Christmas or whatever. That'd be cool. That's kind of cool. So, And then the podcast, you can find it on any podcatcher. You can find it on my YouTube channel, um, you know, iTunes, all the major ones, you know, CastBox and iTunes, all that. So there it is. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Do you have uh, Twitter or anything? I know you're on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Facebook. I'm on, you know, just under Cisco Murdoch. You can, you know, get me there. I'm on, uh, we have our Gatekeepers page, which is Journey Through the Gate Paranormal Portal Podcast Gatekeepers. I'm on High Strangeness with Zuni. Hi, everybody out there. Terrific group. Um, yeah, it's just basically trying to help people. You know, you got a picture or you got something you want to talk about. It's a lot of times now you see pictures, right? And we don't know, is it CG? Is it this or whatever? And, you know, a lot of people like to debunk now, but you never know. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It might be a real picture. It might be this. So you can come talk about that or, Hey, I heard a cool story. That's what's cool about it. Now we're talking and, you know, if we're ever going to learn anything about this and we're ever going to try to help each other through things, Talking and sharing honestly is the best way to do it, don't you think? Yeah, that's probably the best way. You're correct. <laughs> you let me know how you do in your haunted house and 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 what happens. Man, try that. Let me know if you you know if you make yeah. the dowsing rods. You know, I'll show. You. If you want, I'll give you a picture of mine so you got something to go on. Yes, that would be helpful. And the only thing that I that I do recommend, I've had to help a lot of people who've done, you know, like the Ouija board. I'm not saying don't do it. Just know what you're doing. And if you do open something, close it. Because, man, it, for some reason, the lower vibrational uh, entities that are floating around out there, and I do mean whether it's human or otherwise, they, are, they seem to very, they just really connect into stuff like that. It's so easy for them to zip in and you know muck around you know it's yeah. better for you to use your human instincts you know like i said i'm native american we look a lot at animals what do animals do our instincts we sometimes talk ourselves out of those and somebody asked me once well how do you know the the the, the person you're talking to or who whatever you're talking to is who they say they are and i said well think about it this way Imagine a blind person who's been blind for many years and they're sitting in a room and somebody walks in that room. Do you think just by using it, their other senses, their hearing, maybe the person's not saying anything, but just the, the feel of it, their senses, their sixth sense, their se sense of smell, their inter, inner uh, intuitions can almost tell who that is coming in the room. Well, think about it like that. If you use your senses, you know, close your eyes and just feel. I mean, if all the hair goes up on your, you know, if you get that fight or flight thing, don't talk yourself out of the fear, you know. Um, don't battle because you don't know what you're battling, you know. Don't, don't confront. Just if there's anyone good, anyone of uh, positive energy, and would like to come through come through and communicate with me. I'm here and I'm willing to listen to you. And try that approach and see if how that works for you. Because many things that I've been on, those people that do that seem to get the best results. 
Interesting. I will try that. Thanks a there lot. You go.